Okay, next we're going to talk about uh, measures of variation and dispersion. So previously we talked about measures of central tendency, the center of the data. So now it's going. we're going to talk, uh, talk about the spread of the data. So measures of variation or measures of dispersion, um, measures that determine the spread of data values. So we want to see like, what is the range of the data? So from what value to what value does it goes? And um, there are also of, um, what are called the statistical terms that we can use in order to measure the variation of or dispersion. Uh, the simplest one is going to be the range. Uh, and then we also have variance, standard deviation, and coefficient of variation. So which one is the most popular meaningful? So usually uh, we're going to measure this by using variance, standard deviation, and coefficient of variation. So range is not really an exact value. Yes, it can help you to give sort of like an idea on how spread your data is, but it is actually not the best way to uh, do it. Okay, so measures of variation may help researchers describe data more accurately. And as I mentioned just now, variance and standard deviation is the most common. And how do you calculate for variance and standard deviation? Yes, there will be formula given, but actually you don't have to use the formula, simply use your calculator, like the same way for mean. Okay, so let's first have a look at range. So range is basically the difference between the highest value and the lowest value in the data set. So you take the highest value, you minus the lowest value. So suppose here an example, we have a data set of 1, 6, 3, 7, 8, and 5. So this are my data set. So the highest value is going to be 8 and the lowest is going to be 1. So my range value is going to be 8 minus 1, which is going to be a 7. Okay, so the thing about properties of ranges, um, so as I mentioned before, it's the simplest way to measure variation. You just take the highest minus the, uh, minus the lowest value. However, range is not a good way to measure variation because this is going to be a main, main reason because it is highly affected by outliers. So whenever there is outliers in that, automatically the range value is not reliable. Uh, okay, next, uh, after range, so we also have variance. So variance is basically the average of the square of the distance uh, each value is from the mean. So you measure the distance between each of your data point and the mean, you square the value and divide that by the sample. Okay, it's going to be something like this. So I'm going to start with a very simple uh, data set. So example, let's say if I have a data set of one, two and three so what is going to be the mean for this case my mean value is going to be one plus two plus three divided by three and that is going to equal a three so it's, sorry it's going to be a two so because six divided by three so that is going to be a two so if i were to draw uh, my data set so it's going to start from scale i'm going to have one two and three so let's suppose this is going to be my data set. So I'm going to have, I have three of them. And then uh, I'm going to put my mean. So what is the mean value? Mean value is going to be here. So this is going to be the mean. So if I wanted to find what is going to be the variance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the distance between each of uh, this data set and the mean. So for, for one, uh, the difference is going to be uh, one minus two square plus uh, 2, uh, because this is already at 2, therefore the distance is going to be 0. So 2 minus 2 square plus the last one is going to be from here to here. So that is going to be 3 minus 2 square, and that will be over, uh, depend on the formula. So if you have a look over here, so it has two different formula. So one is going to be for population, so one is going to be for uh, sample. So when you have a population for variance, you divide that by uh, n, uh, capital N, which denotes the population itself. And when you find the variance for sample, you divide that by n minus 1. So let's suppose that this come from population. So let's say this is a population value. So therefore, it's going to be divided by 3. So it's going to be over 2 if from sample because it's going to be n minus 1. So depending where does the formula comes from. So this is going to be the idea. So how do we find for variance? But again, as I mentioned to you before, this is easy because I only had three data. But if you have more, 100, 1000 and so on, it is ridiculous to actually count this and use the formula to actually find the value. And even if you have 10, you don't have to do this. Simply use your calculator, plug in the data, and automatically, so your calculator is going to give you the value. So later, I don't promise you it's going to be uh, soon, 
but I'll try to make it in this week. I'm going to send you sort of like a step to step a guide, um, baby steps on how to use your calculator to find the values of mean, variance, um, and so on. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to do that for each type of calculator, the silver one, the gray one, and also the white one. Okay, so that is going to be for the variance. Standard deviation, so that is a relationship between variance and standard deviation. So variance is equal standard deviation square. So if I square the standard deviation, I will get the variance. Or if I have uh, the variance, if I square root that, it becomes the standard deviation and so on. So it's going to be pretty much uh, the same formula. All you have to do, if I square root this, I will get formula for standard deviation, population standard deviation. If I square root this formula, I will get the value for the sample standard deviation. So in your calculator, so your calculator only give you the value of standard deviation. Uh, I think that's the case for the grey calculator and also the silver as well. But for the white one, I think the latest one, it actually gives you both values standard deviation and also the variance but if they give you the value of standard deviation in order to get variance all you have to do is take the value and square the value and automatically we, we will get the variance so it's going to be as easy as that okay properties of variance and standard deviation so as i mentioned just now it's the average of the squares of the distance is the distance between the mean and the data set uh, the data, if the data values are near to the mean, of course, the distance will be smaller, so the, values, the variance will also be smaller. Uh, the square distance it will always be zero. Okay, variance is always a positive value. Remember, there cannot be a negative value for variance, and we use no unit for variance. It's not going to be, if your data is centimeter, so your variance is not going to be in centimeter, so it has no unit. So standard deviation is also going to be the same. It also has positive value. And the units of standard deviation, on the other hand, are similar as the unit of the data. So if your standard deviation, uh, if your data is in centimeter, automatically standard deviation, the unit is also going to be in centimeters. So the last one is going to be coefficient of variation. So it is actually the standard deviation divided by mean. So that is going to be the formula. And in terms of the formula for population and sample, it's basically the same formula, only the notation is different. Remember, for the case of population, for, st uh, for standard deviation, we use sigma and we use s for sample. And for mean, we use mu for population and x bar for sample. And for the case of coefficient of variation, it is always uh, being expressed in terms of percentage. So you take the uh, standard deviation you divide by the mean and multiply that by 100% so as I mentioned so the result is expressed as percentage so when do we use coefficient of variation so when you want to compare the standard deviation when the units are different for example uh, you have two variable for example the easiest one is going to be height and weight so my height is going to be in term of centimeters weight is going to be in term of kilograms so if I were to uh, directly compare the value of the variance, so that is not the way to do it because they have different units. One is centimeters, one is uh, in terms of kilogram. Okay. So if I really wanted to still want to compare them, what I have to do is I have to use coefficient of variation when you have different variables. And of course, again, this is how to use your calculator. I'll prepare that later. Okay, so now let's suppose we have this data set. I have 163785. Um, so my sample, is it population or sample? It's not stated right here. So the range is going to be the highest minus the lowest value. So lowest value 1, highest value 8. So the range is going to be 7. So if this is from population, then variance is going to be sigma square. It's going to be 5.6667. And when you square this value, you will get 2.3805. And if this is from sample, then S square is going to be 6.8. And if you square root that value, you will get that the um, standard deviation is going to equal 2.6077. Okay, and this is going to be called a statistic if it comes from sample parameters, if it, the value comes from a population. Okay, so the calculated sample mean x bar is equal 5. Uh, so if we want to find the coefficient of variation, so remember the formula is going to be uh, sigma over mu if it comes from population 
and it's going to be s over x bar multiplied by 100% if it come from sample but either way it's, it's going to be pretty much the same so if it's come from sample so what happened is that i'm going to have to use this formula s is going to be 2.6007 so divide by x bar which is equal 5 and the percentage is going to be 5.15 so that is going to be the sample coefficient of variation and if you're using this formula of course it's going to be five point uh, sorry it's going to be two point for this case it's going to be two point three eight zero five and that is divided by mu which is going to equal five and the value will be different because the top value is different okay so why is it that uh for variance population uh and the sample variance is different because of the formula so remember i did mention to you just now the fact that if it comes if it's formula for population it's divided by n if it's from sample it's divided by n minus one so that is why when you find the value in your calculator you have to be very careful so do not mistook the value of population as the value for the sample it's different you have to look very carefully so which one is for population and which one is for sample okay that is going to be for coefficient of variation so why do we need to measure uh, variation so measures of variation can be a judgment about how well the measures of average illustrate or depict the data. Okay, so it can also measure the variability. So actually, we, we just wanted to know how spread out the data is. Is it going to be a data, for example, if this is going to be my scale from 1 until 10, so is it everywhere from 1 until 10? Or is it going to be just from here until here? So that is going to be the reason why we need a variance standard deviation or measures of variation. So if your data is spread out like this, and then the measures of variation is going to be higher compared to when it is uh, together like this. So which one is better? So being uh, consistent, being uh, close to each other is better than being too spread out like this. So the data is, uh, we called it as a beta data. So it is, uh, the value is consistent. So most of the value is pretty much the same with each other. So that's a characteristic of a good data. Okay, so why is the example over here? Okay, suppose we wish to compare the performance of two group of students. So I have two group of students. First one is group A and the other one is called as group B. So what happened is that we have two different data sets, but they have the same value of mean. So mean for group A and mean for group B is going to be the same. Is this population or sample? It doesn't state. So let's assume this is going to be sample. So if it's sample, I'm going to use x bar. So the value for uh, the mean for group A is going to equal the mean for group B. So that will be the notation that I'm going to use. x bar A is equal x bar B. Okay, in short, you might conclude that these two groups are equally well performed. So just judging from the measure of average, which is measured by the mean value. So we're going to see that this group probably has equal performance. However, if the data sets are examined graphically, so a different conclusion might be drawn. So what happened is that if you notice the difference between group A and group B, so group A is more spread out. The value covers from 30 until 90. But for the case of group B, the value covers from about 50 until 85. So because this data is more spread out, we know that the variance of group A is going to be higher than the variance of group B because remember we measure the distance. Of, of the data from the mean okay so group b the variance so for for this case variance is going to be s square so the variance of group a is definitely going to be lower so the variance of group b is going to be lower than group a because a is more spread out it is going to be lower than group a okay so both group have a uh, same total number of students so the mean values are the same, but the spread uh, or the variation of the test score is different. So the test score for students from group B is more consistent. Why is it more consistent? Because the value are uh, very close to each other. While for group A, the value is kind of far from each other. If we compare student number six and student number one, so the difference between the test marks is going to be uh, a 60 mark. So that is a very big difference. So when the mean 
values are equal, the larger the, the data range is, the more variable the data. So we know that this one is more variable. It's more spread out. Okay, so what we, can we say about two data sets? So let's say I have two data sets and um, my first data set has smaller variance than the second data set. We can see that population number one is less dispersed, it is less spread, it is less variable, more consistent, or in conclusion, it is a better data. And for the one with bigger uh, measure of variation, we're going to see that it is more dispersed, more spread, more variable, any of the term is usable, and it is actually a worse data. So remember, the smaller the measure of variation, the, the better the data is. So let me put over here. So the smaller the measure of variation, the better the data is. We want it to be small. Okay, so this is going to be another example. So we have age, so age of lecturers in two faculties. So one is from FIS, so the other uh, data is from FKE. So if I were to examine, if I were to eyeball this, so eyeball means I'm just going to have a look uh, using our eyes. We're not going to doing anything. We're not analyzing anything. We just have a look at it. So the smallest value is going to be 24. The highest value is 45. Well, for FKE, the youngest lecturer is 22. That's too young. And the oldest is 53. So what we're going to do is for these two data sets, we're going to find the standard deviations, how you do that. So put these values into your calculator and the calculator give, will give you the value of the standard deviation. And then identify which data set is more consistent and less dispersed. So we want which one is a better data that is more consistent and less dispersed. So what can you say about the variation of age of lecturers in both faculty? So upon calculation, we figured that so for standard deviation of fixed lecturers, is 7.4670 and for FKE lecturers the standard deviation is 9.94760 so here we figure out that FIS has smaller standard deviation than FKE so FIS data is more consistent and less dispersed so the one that is smaller is more consistent and it is less dispersed and we can have a look over here how it only ranged from 24 to 45 but this one it ranged from 22 until 53 Okay, so we can just say that the variation of age for lecturers in fees is small and less dispersed as compared to the FKE lecturers. So that is how you compare between two uh, standard deviation. So what you can actually compute from that. Okay, so this will be uh, the same idea as, I, as um, what we have seen before. So first, what you have to do is you, you use this data and calculate the standard deviation. Uh, and after that, you start comparing which one is uh, smaller, which one is larger. So the smaller one is the less variable. So smaller means less variable. Okay. So I'm going to, as I mentioned just now, I'm going to give you the instruction on how to use your calculator. I really, really encourage you for you to try that on your own and try to figure out if you can actually get this answer for each of the data. Okay and take your time to at least check whether or not that you put uh, the right data for, for each of your data set because there's going to be a lot of numbers going on here actually with the decimal places and so on. So you have to be very careful when you key in the data. So now next what we're going to do is we're going to be comparing two data sets with different units of variable. So this is two data sets. It has different units and variable. So as I mentioned to you before, what happened when you come across cases like this? So what you're going to do is you're going to use the coefficient of variation. So this is where coefficient of variation takes its role to compare when we have two data sets with different units or variable. So I'm going to show you this example right here. So we have the average data of the accountants at a huge company is 31 years old with a standard deviation of four years. Okay, first. Uh, we're talking about age. So the average salary of the accountant is 44,255 per year with a standard deviation of 780. So it doesn't really matter. 
it doesn't really mention of either if it comes from population or sample but don't worry about that so as long as the figures are there so we are talking about two different things first we're talking about their average age and the other one is we're talking about their salary and then what we should do is we're going to compare the variations of age and also the income okay first what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the coefficient of variation for each so remember the formula is going to be the standard deviation for this case standard deviation is four and the mean uh, is given by a value of 31 so that's four over 31 multiplied by 100 percent so let me calculate this so four divided by 31 multiplied by 100 percent so yes that's going to be 12.90 percent so that will be for each and for the case of salary, so it will be the same idea. So the standard deviation is given by 780 divided by the mean, which is given by 44,255. So average is actually another word for mean. So yes, is average. So it's actually, it's the same thing as the mean. And of course, multiply it by 100%. So 780 divided by 44,255 multiply it by 100%. So that is going to give us um, a value of, four, hold on, where do I get different value? 780, so divide by 44255, multiplied by 100. So that's actually 1.76%. Yeah, that's not 117.63. This is actually supposed to be 1.76%. So I'm pretty sure that my calculation is correct. Okay, so here what we're going to do is we're going to compare the variation. So we can see that the... So we can use the same uh, way that they interpret just now. We can see that it, which one is going to be uh, more consistent and less dispersed. So we can see that the data for... So which one is smaller? So for this case, see for us, coefficient of variation for H is bigger. No, it's going to be bigger now. So H is going to be bigger than salary. So salary is better. The data for salary is more consistent and less dispersed. So that is one way we can interpret the coefficient of variation. Or you can actually use any other terms that we have seen before so you can see less dispersed less spread more consistent more precise more accurate so any of those terms are correct so that is how you actually interpret the measures of variation